um, can't understress the role of the microbiome because it is key in turning our genes on and off. It is key in the epigenetics phenomenon is these bugs that are in our gut that are gene generating 3 million genes. So remember I said we have 23,000 genes as human beings, but our gut microbiome gives us 3 million genes. So we are literally 10% of our gut microbiome. And when our microbiome, when our gut bugs are unhealthy, we are going to be unhealthy. And that can show up as joint pain, brain fog, you know, fatigue, I can't lose weight, so many different itises that can show up because our microbiome does many, many, many things for us. And this is just a snapshot of what it does, but it, one, helps us digest our food. So without a proper digestion system, without proper um, access to the juices that are in our mouth and in our gut and from our pancreas we and stomach acid, along with that, the microbiome, the good bacteria helps us digest and it creates an environment of a stable, strong gut. So in our cell, in our gut, we have these little cells that have these finger-like projections. And these are the, uh, and the epithelial cells of the gut, single cells that between that and the blood, blood is in this area where it's in the colon. So your immune system sitting here waiting for the bad guy. And when the food comes, it comes past the good microbiome. The microbiome is sitting right above this. So the good microbiome starts to digest the food. These finger-like villi start to digest the food. And as the food comes out on the other side, it looks like a digested food particle. And that your immune system says, cool, I don't have to worry about that guy. But as we get unwell, as we start doing lifestyle changes that are unfavorable to us, as we start taking foods that are more inflammatory or medications that are changing our gut microbiome, like antibiotics, these microbiomes start having hole in them. The bacteria start having holes in them. The finger-like projections start to fall. The cells start to separate. And then the, the food that's going through it is not looking like a digested food particle. So all of a sudden now your asparagus looks like a weird thing. And every time you eat that asparagus, you're going to start to get an itis of something. And that itis could look like brain fog, fatigue, joint pains. Um, we do a lot with the gut integrity. But microbiome is really, really a key part of that. It creates our vitamins. So it creates those B vitamins that help us do so many things. So most of the reactions in our body are based on enzymatic reactions, it means you need enzymes to create one thing to the next things. And a lot of those enzymes will need cofactors and cofactors are in the form of nutrients and vitamins and minerals. And that comes from where? That comes from our food, but it's also created by our gut bugs. So our healthy gut bugs create um, these nutrients that help our whole body function efficiently, which is another reason why it's so important. It also makes our hormones. So it, you know, when, when there is a lot of hormonal issues like menopause, premenopause, perimenopause, PMS, postpartum depression, you know, there's all these hormonal induced itises that are created in our body and it's real. But one of the things that change is that your gut microbiome can change when you have um, associated with um, these hormonal changes, but it helps create our hormones. And that is driven by a lot of it is driven by fiber. So one of the first things I try to do when people have any sort of hormone issues, I work on the gut to help them create these hormones, which also are um, created, which are also helped by the vitamins. So all of these things work on top of each other neurotransmitters. So our happy juice, our serotonin, 80% is made by the gut bugs. Neuro so dopamine, serotonin, these are things that communicate to the brain about motivation and energy. And also you could be tired from not having enough serotonin or dopamine. You can be tired and have brain fog when you don't have enough dopamine around. So you can maybe not sleep well when your serotonin is not happy. So working on your gut bugs can actually change our neurotransmitters. It also is a big factor in metabolism. So all day long, we deal with people that say, I can't lose weight. I can't lose weight. There's many reasons for that. And just one part of it is calories in and calories out. Of course, that matters, but that is not the end all be all. The quality and our gut integrity, our um, lack of intestinal permeability or leaky gut, our presence of bad guys like ab abnormal bacteria, fungus, or yeast um, can also deter 
inflammation in our body can also kind of slow down our metabolism, our hormone imbalance slows down our metabolism. So there is a lot of things that hold on to weight, not just the fact that what you're eating. There's also the gut brain connection. So foods you eat grow certain bacteria, which can create things called short chain fatty acids that are communicators to the brain that help us think, help our mood, help the quality of our brain function as well. There's actually a thought that our brain has its own microbiome and some of the inflammation, the neural inflammation that can present as anxiety or depression is related to the fact that we have an abnormal brain microbiome, which is can be communicated through the gut. So there's a two-way street between the brain and the gut. So if you think about, you know, when you're stressed out, some people, especially women, tend to have GI issues, heartburn, indigestion, diarrhea. They call it irritable bowel syndrome, but it could be just a manifestation of a stress response. Um, energy production, how much energy you have. So you can be tired from just mental fatigue. Having bad gut bugs can make you tired. I feel like I'm sleepy. I can't do what I need to do. My stamina has changed. My workouts have changed. That could be a function of your gut bugs as well. And as we're talking about today, genes, you know, microbiome is one of the main places where those genes turn on and off. So very, very important to take care of these gut bugs. And also inflammation can turn on and off through, through the presence of a healthy microbiome. Okay, so you don't just wake up one day and have diabetes. You don't just wake up one day and have heart disease. It is a process. This inflammatory process has been happening for a while. And just like your car is telling you, makes noises, flashes lights, your symptoms is, is telling you, your body is telling you, I am having an itis. I am ha I'm not in balance. Please address this issue. And that can show up as fatigue. That can show up as heartburn indigestion. That can show up on the skin like acne, weight gain, um, inability to gain weight, poor concentration, memory, low mood itis. Any sort of symptom that's present can be a manifestation of a poor gut microbiome, the start of an inflammatory process the issues about developing illness. So many, many ways your body's trying to communicate to you. We have to stop and listen and find out, go back and look to see, am I in balance with my parasympathetic system? Okay. So eventually, if you continue to ignore, 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 when that sympathetic system stays up, if you have a heart rate elevation, a blood pressure elevation, and a cortisol elevation, if that keeps staying on and on and on and on, you know, what does high blood pressure over time turn into? Well, it can turn into hypertension. It could turn into heart disease because that's a risk factor. What does heart rate elevation turn into over time? If you keep ignoring it, it could turn into palpitations, tachycardia, sinus arrhythmias, or you know, all sorts of arrhythmias that can happen. And cortisol, when it stays elevated, this is when you know the cortisol uh, concept of it's our enemy starts to really play out. When cortisol's on all the time, it can cause immune dysfunction. It can start to change the way it's attacking viruses and attacking bacteria. You can start showing up as how many of us, like when we're when we're totally run down, we catch a cold and that cold just doesn't go away. That's our immune system dysfunction. And sometimes when you persist, some people get autoimmune disease. Our bodies are capable of attacking, you know, the things that are attacking itself. But when our cortisol and our immune system is dysfunctional, it stops recognizing those rogue antibodies that are attacking ourselves. So autoimmune disease can, 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 can start showing up. Cortisol also is important to get blood sugar into the body. Blood sugar, our brain needs glucose in order to function. So when we're under stress, when we're sleep deprived, when our body needs more fuel, it's going to ask for sugar. It's going to ask for glucose which is those sugar cravings people feel when they're tired. It's going to be when I'm sleepy, when I'm sleep deprived, when I'm totally stressed out. Those are the comfort foods that we crave. And that's the cortisol that's demanding more sugar into the body. What happens when cortisol is all, all the time, demanding sugar all the time? Well, that can lead to insulin resistance and diabetes. So our manifestations of a diagnosis, if you will, is a function of something that's been playing out for a while that is causing this imbalance that your body is telling you, hey, this is brewing, this is brewing, please listen to me. So it can look like these diagnoses of arthritis and heartburn and cancer and irritable bowel, but it's very unusual to have it happen overnight. So this is where we need to start making our choices and figure out how we're going to help our system. So lifestyle factors, imbalance, 
equal inflammation. So on one side, we have this concept of poor sleep, mental stress, water you know, uh, pollutants, processed foods, the sedentary lifestyle that most of us are now leading because of, um, you know, since COVID, a lot of people are able to work from home. Their commute is gone. Their movement, their parking, they're going to a parking lot is gone. They're not walking upstairs. They're sitting in their, you know, their office or their kitchen or wherever they're working from. And they sit and they just do Zoom calls all day. So we're becoming more sedentary. We have to make sure that we are fighting that concept. Environmental toxins are also real. Um, and some of those are our stressors. They're not all of them, but that's an example of the stressors that we feel. And we have lots of tools, lots of tools that are some of these have been scientifically shown to also change the way our genes manifest. Exercise, yoga, clean water, meditation, plant-based diet. You know, these are our resources. This is our toolkit. And in there, I also want to throw in fasting, calorie restriction, and um, optimism. So how we think, how we are able to control our thoughts can also help us, you know, have hope. If we have hope, we tend to do better with our health. And those are our resources for, um, you know, keeping us in balance and lowering inflammation. Again, when this scale tilts one way to the other, inflammation has started. So we've talked more about this in our book, Body on Fire. Um, Dr. Agarwal, who's a cardiologist, her journey also through rheumatoid arthritis is discussed in the book, um, how she's kind of conquered that with lifestyle. And um, this is the tool that I give all my patients, that these are the concepts that I want you to kind of rely on as we deal with your individual journey. Um, inflammation is an itis. It's your body is on fire. It's an itis of something. So one thing we want to start looking at is also not just what is anti-inflammatory, we want to look at what is inflammatory. What are we doing that are turning on these genes for inflammation? What are we doing? Why do we have so much chronic illness? This is not a genetic issue. This is a lifestyle concept that is affecting our choices, which is causing illnesses to go up. Because remember, our genes haven't changed. We have the same genes, but we have more chronic illness now than ever. So we got to look at things that are significantly causing that issue. I know a lot of you have already heard about the diet and, and some of these things, but I just want to reiterate that the SAD diet, which is the standard American diet, can be loaded in inflammation potentials um, through the saturated fats with meats, um, through refined grains where they're taking out, you know, refined means that they're taking out things that are nutritious and the fiber. Fiber is key. We are an under fiber uh, it's an epidemic that of how little fiber we have. So fiber deficiency is actually a real problem. Why? Because fiber grows our microbiome. So microbiome is very important to have um, lots of different colonies, lots of different guys, lots of different key players, and fiber grows those things. So when we're eating foods that are, you know, taken out, the fiber has been taken out, it's really problematic. And also processing. So Processing is the same thing. They're removing the nutrients. They're removing the things that are anti-inflammatory. So vitamin C, vitamin A, all these micro micronutrients, these phytonutrients that are in our foods are kind of taken out and dyes are added and artificial chemicals and that's processing. So those are inflammatory to our body. Mm -hmm.